Welcome Twitch, welcome YouTube to our last guide regarding ships. We have done steel ships, we have done research power ships, and now we're gonna go over the third third part, which is gonna be coal ships. Which coal, which coal ships are recommended, the pros and cons, what you could spend your coal for, what you shouldn't, and so on. And we're gonna go over again, just like in the steel video and in the research bio video, we're gonna go over the, each of them. Although I'm gonna speed it a bit up when it comes to the tier 5 to tier 3 kind of like cold ships, because they're not that important in this measure. Good. We're gonna start with the black, and first of all, all cold ships are pretty decent. There's again, just like with the steel ships, you don't really have a cold ship that completely sucks. Although there is one or two I would heavily not recommend, but more on them later. USS Black. What do we have here? We have a radar Fletcher with a smoke screen. What is the difference between a Fletcher? Well, first of all, you have radar instead of speed boost in a slot. Although you can probably you can play it without radar, but you would not get the black if you played without radar. So you get smoke and radar, which is a very good combination. That means you can smoke up in some DD fights, still harass the enemy DD with your 7.5km radar, and it's really good. You get 5 guns, just like Fletcher, with the same DPM. So not bad when it comes to gun power. And you get 10 torpedoes. Now these torpedoes are very different to the Fletcher torpedoes. First of all, you got more range. They are way, way slower. The community actually calls them sea mines for just as a meme or a joke because I think they go 42 knots or something. I'm not sure exactly uh, right now, but they're very slow. Now, a lot of people say black is bad in a way that the torpedoes are absolute garbage, but they're not. They're the complete opposite. Black torpedoes are, are in my opinion, some of the best torpedoes in the game. Simply because people never, a lot of people never take the op uh, the part of torpedo detection values into into their calculations how good a torpedo is, and Black has next to Kabarovs the best torpedo detection value for normal torps. I think it's 900 meters. Just to letting you know, Shima torpedoes have I think the 20 km Shima torpedoes have like over 2 km. Detection, I'm not sure about the exact value. The 12 cam torpedoes have, I think, 1.8 kilometers. So they're half of the detection of the 12 cam torpedoes of Shima. And just because they're slow, that doesn't mean you can react fast to them. No, you need to see the speed and the torpedo detection. In a, you need to put them in relation to understand how you can react to them. And if you spot black torpedoes, sure, with a hydro you have endless time of reaction time, but without a hydro you have less reaction time than with gearing or Shima torpedoes. This is something you need to remember. Once you see them, your broadside to them, for example, you have less reaction time than most other torpedoes in the game, except deep water torpedoes. Which means when you see them, it's too late and you most likely go down. Since they also do, I think, a 19k damage, which is quite a lot. So overall, Black is a very powerful ship. You have a Fletcher with sea mines <laughs> instead of torpedoes. You have the same gun power, although you would probably build it more for guns, since you want to utilize the maximum DPM during your radar duration. And overall, it's a very solid and great ship. Plus, it's a tier 9 premium ship, so you make more money with it. It's definitely highly recommended. And while nearly 300,000 coal is a lot, it's Oof. still a very, Oof. very good ship. HLND just subscribed. What's sub? Thank you so much, H44 months. You're absolutely insane. Thank you. Moving on to Nostoshimi. Now, Nostoshimi is a very interesting ship. I wouldn't call it particularly strong, but not weak either. Again, let me explain. It has decent torpedoes, which also have very good detection values, but they reload very slowly. It also has pretty decent concealment with 5.6, if I'm not wrong, which is very good. And it also has two Soviet guns, kind of the 130 millimeters of the Grozovoy. Now, these guns have insanely good ballistics for DD guns, 
but you do have very lackluster DPM. They shoot very slow. They shoot very slow. You have only two of them. Uh, for DD standards, they shoot slow. I think, still think it's four seconds or something. But it, you have only two of them equals four barrels. And your torpedoes reload also very slow. So your damage output overall is very low. Now, on the other hand, this ship has insane detection. And it has a zombie heal. By zombie heal, I mean it has a super heal, which makes it very interesting. You can take a lot of punishment unless it's Torps. Because then your super heal is kind of useless because you cannot heal nowhere near as much as normal HE damage on you or AP damage. But it's kind of a DD that can spot long for the team. Not really punch out damage, but can take quite a lot of damage. So it's like you're giving up damage output for damage survivability it's depending if you like it or not it can be very in my opinion very frustrating to play because you, your damage will only go up super slow but on the other hand you can tank a lot you can outspot enemy so i'll play them with it so it's a decent ship it's nowhere near as black good as black in my opinion when you compare them but it's still a very decent ship um so it is recommended for me, but it's not really particularly fun to play, in my opinion. And it's not really better than most other DDs. But it's fine. It's it's solid. It's not bad. Moving on to Malta. Guys, you know I hate CVs. Uh, Malta and Immelmann are, of course, both of them are no exceptions. Both of them are disgustingly strong. Malta has AP bombers that just evaporate most light cruisers in one or two runs despite them dropping them poorly or not so again these two ships are if you look at the power of them both of them Immelmann and Malta are recommended they're absolutely amazing at what they can do I hate them personally again I hate the whole class the whole concept I think it's busted it's terrible for the game but so be it but if I have to judge them against other tier 10 terriers Malta is one of the best and Immelmann is very solid Malta is probably next to Nachimov and Haku the best tier 10 CV in the game. And FDR. Although FDR is also very boring because the planes are even slower. But yeah. Immelmann, also solid. Skip bombers work like a charm. You can strike DDs, you can strike cruisers, you can strike battleships with it. Very, very strong CV indeed as well. Now, GK. <clears throat> Nostra has normal normally. No, Nostra has a super heal. Anyway, I can show it to you later, so believe me. I'm not gonna do it now. GK. Actually, I can show you Nostra Hill right now because somebody doesn't believe me that Nostra has a norm. Nostra can heal insane amount of damage, is where it is. Specialized repair team. 400 HP, 20 seconds. That's, that's by the way, 8k. Now, let's look at another. Let's look at Tashkent. Repair party. 149 only. So, Nostra has a way strong... It has a specialized one that's very strong. It's double the healing kit per second. Even nearly a third time. So now you know it as well, Dog Strange. Good. Back to the ships. I just had to show somebody that it has a super heal. Good, where were we? Oh yeah, GK. <laughs> I love that they don't show any weakness on GK. Interesting. Does it have any weakness? Ah, they just didn't show it. Okay. So, for those of you who played long enough World of Warships, they don't really need to pay attention to it. And they know GK used to be a tech tree ship. GK is not a bad battleship, but it's not great either. Let me explain. It used to be a tech tree ship, so most people that had it now have it for free as a special ship, so it's not really important for them. But for those people who did not get it and now could potentially buy it, it is a battleship that was, back in the day, the king of brawling. It has a turtle back, it was very tanky, the only downside was the very bad firing angles and the massive superstructure. Nowadays, though, it's nowhere near as good in the state anymore. It has only up to 420 millimeter guns, which means you cannot overmatch 30 millimeters, which means you cannot deal massive amount of damage to cruisers if they angle, like most other 457 ships. 
It has not a really good torpedo belt, it's massive. And while the secondaries used to be strong, because in comparison there was nothing that was better, nowadays it's just a shadow. And personally, if you buy the ship, you should build it as a tank build and not secondary build, because the secondaries are nowhere near as good as they used to be back in the day. And they were not better, they were actually worse back in the day. But why I say they were better is because there was no competition. There was no Schlieffen, there was no Ohio, there was no German Battlecruiser line, there was no Napoli and so on. All those ships that were really good in secondaries, they didn't exist. <laughs> so technically the Germans had the best secondaries. Other than that, it has high HP pool, decent armor, turtle back as I mentioned, so it's not bad, like any, there is no real bad tier 10 battleship honestly. Like people say Monty and GK might be some of the worst BBs because they just lack the overmatch and they don't have capabilities like the other ships. While I agree, although I disagree with Monty because the accuracy is so good, uh, while I agree they're not as good as other ships other battleships on the tier, there is no bad battleship. The worst tier 10 battleship in the game is Christopher Columbo in my opinion, and even that can perform still decently, so there is no bad tier 10 battleship in the game, in my opinion. So even if you take it, you're not getting a bad ship, it's just, I would not take it as a first pick probably. It's, it's decent, but nothing too strong and so on. So we're moving on to Napoli and that's the complete opposite. Napoli is one of the strongest and craziest cruisers in the game. It is insanely tanky, it has really good concealment, it's fast and it has a moving smoke generator like most Italian things so you move full speed and the smoke goes with you. It has really strong sap secondaries and while the main guns are not the amazing factor of the ship, they're still very capable and decent and nowhere near as bad as it's described. Plus you can overmatch light cruiser, uh, you can overmatch super light cruiser armors of for example Minotaur, Smolensk and so on, which gives it really also a nice advantage. It is very tank tanky, maneuverable, again hard hitting secondaries, decent torpedoes and a smoke screen. It's one of those ships where you decide how to play the battle and not the battle dictates how you to have to play. Like, what I mean by it, of course you can always decide how you can play a battle, but Napoli just doesn't care. If we exclude CVs and so on, Napoli can choose what to do and not, like, for example, this you see people going, like, into you or something broadside whatsoever. With certain ships you need to, like, for example, with a Zao, you need to kite away, you need to shoot them on a distance, keep your distance, and so. With Napoli, you can choose what you do, and you can, in a lot of times, go out on top. This ship chooses, but it's, so the captain chooses how to play the ship and can make it work. It's not that the battle decides that you have to play like this to use it optimally. No, Napoli can use so many different ways of playing that, that you don't really care about how the battle is going. You can still do go for multiple approaches and be in some of them victorious. It's such a good ship and probably one of the best cold ships you can get currently. It's great, it's absolutely fantastic and it gets a super duper recommendation for me. Fantastic ship. Yoshino. Yoshino is, in a short way, a massive Zao. That's it's pretty much the best how you can describe it. It's pretty much a Zao with more range. 20 km torpedoes, or 12, but you should take 20 cams just because you really go into these close fights and if you do, you can also land the 20 km torpedoes. It doesn't matter, at certain ranges you can miss both of them. Yoshino is very good at farming down. It doesn't have a lot of battle impact, but it's very good at farming damage um, and burning down opponents while holding defensively a kiting flank. Hello there. It is not very good in offensive capabilities because it's an absolutely massive ship covered in 30mm plating, which means battleships love to shoot you no matter if you're broadside or if you're angled. They will do massive amount of damage to you because you're huge. But the guns are really good. The concealment can also be pretty good. And overall, it's a solid ship, in in a lot of ways, a kind of better Zao. So, it's a it's like a mega Zao. That's a good how you could describe it. It's like a massive Zao. If you like it, you can go for it. It's a pretty decent ship. 
But again, nowhere near as strong as, for example, Napoli or Moskva, which we move now to. Now, Moskva. Most people have probably, if they played long enough, whilst they have the ship, because Moskva used to be also a tactic ship and got replaced by Alexander Nevsky. Moskva is an absolutely fantastic cruiser in a way that it can endure a lot of it's it endure a lot of damage it has insanely good armor it has when you angle that's really important to mention though when you angle if you show broadside you can get deleted super easily but if you angle it has insanely brutal armor can withstand bbs quite decently has really good he and really good ap guns super fast shell velocity Decent maneuverability and a high HP follow for, for a cruiser. Plus, it has a 12 cam radar. These are all the upsides. Now, the downsides, as mentioned, it's very easy to punish if it shows from broadside by kind of any opponents, maybe besides the Ds. And then there's Elbing and laughs at him and also deletes him. So, it is very tanky as long as you angle. If you show broadside, it can get devastated super easily. So, you need to be very aware of the map when you're playing. You have need to have. A lot, a lot of times, a big awareness where shots can come from, where is the biggest danger for me, and always try to be angled against most or all targets. It is also very fast. The only real downside the ship has, besides the being able to get punished quite easily, is the concealment. It has 14.1 cam concealment, which is massive for a cruiser and more than a lot of BBs actually. So going dark in it is not that easy, although you can play it on range as well. So it's a very good ship in, in the hand of a capable captain and not an absolute potato. Really, really strong in a potato. It's going to be awful because you will get this death strike pretty much every game. But very heavily recommended and a good ship if you didn't get it. Khabarovsk. Khabarovsk used to be the king of gunboats back in the land before our time when it was pretty much the strongest gunboat in the game. These times are long gone. It's still a decent ship, but it's nowhere near... Like, I just wouldn't recommend it, simply because there's Kleber, there's Maso, there's Ragnar, there is something like a Vampire 2, a Daring, there is... What else is there? What did I miss? I can't remember what I missed. Harugumo. There's so many ships that just do the job better and more consistent than Kabaros nowadays. Kabaros can still be a decent gunboat. It can still be fun to play. G-Dance. Yeah, G-Dance, of course. But overall, it felt really far behind. And it's kind of, for me, just a collecting boat. It can work, of course. It, I mean, it does have a decent amount of guns. But you need the legendary module for it. Why do you need the legendary module for it? Because you get then extra range and then overall it's more solid to play. Without the extra range it's very atrocious to play it at these short ranges. I think for whatever it has 13km or something, I'm not sure. It's very atrocious to play and it is pretty has pretty huge concealment and it's not the most maneuverable thing either. So again, it's okay but... Most gunboats or a lot of gunboats are far better than this one. Good. Moving on to Salem. Salem is... To, to make it short, Salem is a Des Moines. With a worse radar. And you have to choose between radar or hydro. But you should most of the time choose the radar still in my opinion. But you get a super heal. Now, you cannot slot the legendary of the Moines, so the maneuverability is also kind of worse if you use the legendary. But see it like a more HE spam resilient Des Moines. It can heal up enormous damage and it can still punch out damage just like in Des Moines. But you give up, again, you give up a, a way better Raider, you give up Hydro at the same time, and you give up. Um, Exane acceleration of the legendary model. So it's a side grade to the Moines. It's not bad. Salem is a fantastic ship. I like it still. I still recommend it. Um, even if you have a Des Moines, just to have a slightly different Des Moines, it's never bad. And it's a very fun ship to play. All you have to do, just like with all cruisers and 30 millimeters, you gotta be playing it more island based. 
You cannot play it openly like uh, Napoli or Moscow. And you need to be very careful about battlefield overmatch since you're covered in 32 millimeters. So, good chip recommended. Hayate. <laughs> okay, first of all, Hayate was used to be a 3 speed ship at the same time as Smallland. And this is exactly why most people never recommended Hayate. You had few million free XP and you could choose back in the day between Hayate and Smallland. And we all know that Smallland is probably the best tier 10 DD in the game. Maybe with Ragnar or Kleber again. Gotta see it like this or Vampire 2 in my opinion. But Hayate is not bad. The only reason people never recommended it is because you could have gotten a Smallland. And Smallland is just one of the most overpowered DDs in the game. So, back to Hayate topic. Now Hayate is for coal and you cannot get small anymore. Do I recommend Hayate? Yes, I do. Why do I recommend Hayate? It is something completely unique because what you get is you get Shima gun, the Shima guns of a Shima with way more DPM. And you lose a bit of concealment and a bit of maneuverability. But you get those... I mean, who didn't love playing Shima and had these three 4k HE salvos on enemy DDs if you landed them correctly? And now imagine you have Hayate with a Hello, way better man. reload and you can pump it out very good. Plus, you still have, I think, 10 torpedoes. Yeah, you still get 10 torpedoes. And you can choose between a torpedo reload booster or smoke screen. But honestly, I would always go for the smoke screen because the torpedo reload booster is not that worth it on it since these are Japanese torpedoes and they're not that good, honestly. But yeah, all of this a bit worse on CMAT, but higher gun DPM makes a yard a formidable ship and for me very fun to play, so it's definitely recommended by me. It's it's strong, it's no when you're overpowered, it's not one of the best ships ever, but it's a very strong and fun ship to play. Now we go to Tromp. Tromp, very, very interesting ship as well. Just like Hayate T10 And I definitely recommend it. I don't think also it's one of the better ships, but it has a very unique trace style. Tromp is the only DD in the game currently that has airstrikes from the Dutch. You can call in airstrikes with a very tight pattern and actually quite some damage. It's one of those ships where you can meme around, where you can, where you can kind of solve, kind of solve battle situations where there's just camping and nothing is happening, but you can force out DDs from behind islands, you can force out cruisers from behind islands, because they can just nothing do really something about your airstrikes. Um, the guns are decent, it has three torpedoes per side, they're not that good. But it's also pretty fast and it got a decent concealment value. So with the air, combining that with the airstrikes, it's a very fun ship to play and definitely not bad. Overall, I'll give it a solid above average, but the fun factor for me at least is there. And it's something very unique. If you want to something, have something unique, it's definitely recommended. You don't have a smoke screen, but I don't do think you also get a heal, right? Okay, no, you don't get a heal. But you don't get a smoke screen, that's the downside. But other than that, very nice ship. I like it. I like Trump. Alvero de Bazan. <laughs> ah, Spanish CD. How can I describe it the best? It's a decent ship as well. It's not bad. It doesn't have the best concealment. It has a very low rate of fire. Although... It can use an F key button. It has an F key button just like super, some super ships where you press on it and it goes insanely on the duck. I think it's a burst fire of three or four volleys, which can do massive amount of damages. Uh, damage. Is it worth it for that gimmick? You do have not the best torpedoes either. You're pretty fast though. So all in all, it's an okay ship. It can work, like the F key can do some ridiculous moves like you see somebody with 6, 7k like driving away, just going dark. You go pump that F key and still annihilate them. It can be very juicy. But overall, it's not that impressive and just a pretty average destroyer. So, not necessarily worth taking. Now we come to Masso and Sherman. 
How much more do we have to do? Okay, it's actually not that much anymore. Masso in German. German. Masso is pretty much... Imagine you have a Kleber with weaker or like slower torps and guns that are not as hard hitting but way faster firing and you do have very floaty arcs. You're pretty much giving up on the... You're pretty much getting insane amount of DPM while giving up on each individual strength of shot. How do I mean it? <laughs> but when you play Kleber, you have insane 140... I don't, I'm not... I don't know the caliber, but Kleber has very hard hitting guns, which have really slow reload, but you have a reload booster and then you get insane amount of DPM and you can melt pretty much everything. With the Masso, you have always insane DPM, but the shells are not as hard hitting and they're very floaty. Personally, I prefer the Masso over the Kilbear. I think for, for my playstyle, I like the Masso more. But they're just really, really good gun boats in general. They are very fast, the Masso and Kilbear. You can duke shells with the speed boost, which means basically you park with your back into, for example, uh, near cap. You farm enemy battleships. They shoot you, you can either go forward or backwards with a speed boost and pretty much dodge most of the time all this all the salvos. That's duking by the way, in case you never knew what, what I mean with engine duking. Really fast top speed, really good acceleration, insane DPM. Masso is a very strong ship and definitely recommended by me. Very strong ship and if you want to have that French DD, I go super fast brr, moment, Masso is the thing to go. Sherman. This, when this thing was added, we were like all, wow. This TD has the fastest firing guns in the game. I think in general, it has the fastest firing guns in the game. It has only three guns, and they're only SAP and HE. But the DPM you can get out of them is crazy. This ship is all about the guns. The gun arcs are decent, and the amount of damage they can put out is crazy. It's pretty much like the minigun of this game. It has, however, downsides, but I'm gonna first go on the upside. It does have American smoke screens, which are amazing, and it does have a 5 gam hydro, which makes it also be very strong. So it can be a very good farmer and cap contester. It does have two heavily and big downsides, though. First of all, very bad concealment for a DD, and very by, by bad I mean very bad. I think it's 6.7, and for cap Hello contesting, uh, 6.5. And for Captain Cap contesting DD, that's not very good. It is also gigantically slow. Just like a daring, it suffers a lot from speed. And third of no third of all, you only have two torps per side, which are in a fixed position. You have barely like you need to like usually you have a big cone like this when you have torpedo spreads. And the cone there is frontally and just as small as like this areas so the torps are really hard to utilize so rely completely on your guns and especially in knife fights it can be somewhat frustrating with your maneuverability and your slow speed to be a winner as i mean if they push to your hydro you just melt them but overall it does have its weaknesses it's still a very strong ship and i definitely recommend it it's a lot of fun to play but you do have some major downsides on the ship. Still very strong and recommended. Groningen. Groningen is in a lot of ways a tier 9 Sherman you could say. Just you don't have torpedoes. You have also very bad concealment but a really good smoke screen and hydro. And you have insane Dakar power. You do however unlike the Sherman again you don't have, you don't have torpedoes. So you have no stopping power against BBs at all. But high DPM, good cap contester, pretty much the same weaknesses and strengths as Sherman. So also 49, heavily recommended. It's especially great in ranked, where you can just farm the Ds down and then half of the team is gone already. So Groningen is a very good ship. <clears throat> Aegir, decent battlecruiser, but overall... Nothing special, really. You get kind of okay guns. They're not amazing, they're not bad either. 
It says high survivability, although that's a big lie. First of all, when you angle, when you angled, battleships can still overmatch your deck armor and your front part because you have only at the side 90 mm, the, the deck armor is 30 and you have 27 in the front. So you have a massive nose where they can overmatch you. And secondly, of all, this thing has a fake turtle back. What I mean by fake turtle back is it looks like a turtle back in the armor layout, but it just doesn't work with the values and you will just get straight citadel by most BBs in the game. So it's not really a good ship in my opinion. Yes, we have a hydro, but you have really bad firing angles and it's okay. It's nothing. It's nothing I would recommend first. So overall, not really. I mean, it's an okay ship. I can't say it's bad because it's not bad, but it's only okay. There are way better picks, as I mentioned before at first. So, <laughs> now Azuma. You would think Azuma works like Yoshino, and in a lot of ways you're right, but Azuma is a no-go. Azuma is absolutely not recommended. Zero. Why is, why is Yoshino recommended, but Azuma not? Because this one peer difference takes so much from the ship, it's ridiculous. First of all, Yoshino is way more accurate than Azuma. Quite a bit actually, it has a better accuracy. And Azuma is fully covered in 27mm plating. Fully. Besides of course the Citadel. Yoshino is covered in 30mm plating. I know it doesn't make a big difference in some scenarios, but you just gotta remember, being covered in 27 means you can get overmatched by 406 mm guns and bigger. A Yoshino can only be overmatched by 431 mm guns and bigger. And that's a massive, massive difference. Because, yes, there is insane amount of high caliber bees nowadays in the game. But there is still a lot of people who play Monty. There's a lot of people who play Bogonje, there's a lot of people who play Mecklenburg, there's a lot of people who play GK and so on, Schlieffen, and all these ships, Shushino can tank and Zazuma can't. Azuma is just a massive floating citadel while giving up torpedoes and giving up the accuracy of Yoshino. It's a very terrible ship in my opinion, it's super easy to punish from every angle and overall under no circumstance really a good ship. I don't recommend it. I think it's very bad. Is Mecklen 305? Yeah. So it can Oh, yeah, well, Mecklenburg can't overmatch Azuma as well. I'm sorry, that's true. That was my mistake. But overall, not recommended. It's probably the worst investment of steel, in my opinion, this ship. <clears throat> Borgonia is 380. Wait, I'm a mistake now. Wait, no, I said... I said Bogoni, Azuma can tank Bogoni. You, you confused me right now. But anyway, everything that's 406 four mm guns will smash on Azuma. Everything for, for Yoshino, it's only 431. Sorry. It's trash. I don't recommend Azuma. Too many downsides. There's way better sh ships you can take. Iwami. Iwami is a decent ship, first of all. I know a lot of people also think it's not that great. And I agree, it's not the best ship ever. But I had a, fun, a few fun rounds of it. Iwami has decent secondary armament. Although I would never build it into secondaries. Simply because it has Japanese gun dispersion. What does Japanese battleship gun dispersion mean? Japanese ships get a benefit the further they're away from the enemy. I don't know if you ever noticed it, but if you play Yama and you're in a brawl, your guns tend to go sometimes very questionable or at lower ranges, while they're pretty accurate on long ranges. This also counts for Iwami, so you want to play the ship more on range. You're not tanky in Iwami, it's a decent ship, angled, but nothing special. <coughs> you can get a cheese spammed quite easily down. And the guns reload pretty fast, have a decent range, so you want to play this ship despite having torps and secondaries, more on the longer to medium range and not short range. Simply because that's where Japanese ships excel. If you do it, it's decent. It has a very high rate of fire and it has 20km torpedoes for the memes. So definitely a decent ship. Looks pretty cool as well in my opinion, pretty unique. Um, oh, 
nothing else to add to it. Just don't brawl with it too much. You will be very sad about it. Good firing angles as well, yeah. Iwami has also pretty decent firing angles, that's true. Kearsarge. Some people love it, some people hate it. Kearsarge is one of the strongest cold ships in the game. Simply for the fact it has planes and 12 guns. First of all, it has 12 NC guns. If you don't have problem at aiming with North Carolina guns and you like them anyway, here you get 12 of them instead of 9. Plus you can slot this 9-11% dispersion module, making them very, very accurate. Just the so slow shell flight time can be a problem, or the slow shell speed to be exact, can be a problem for people because it's hard to aim at longer ranges. <clears throat> now, what makes Kearsarge so broken is not only that broadside power, which is devastating, it is also the fact that you can play it against angled targets in a different way. You can just load HE, you shoot your full load of HE on a target, hit it, set it on fire, he damage guns, then you launch your planes and shoot the tiny Tim rockets into the target and it will burn constantly. Which is also in a way how you can rack up insane amount of damage numbers with it. But again, that's not the thing why it's broken. The reason why it's broken is it has a plane squad every 90 seconds if you want to and it gives you the utility to spot wherever you want. See it like a perma radar that has covers a small area of ground. How often are you in a battleship? You're getting chased by a DD. Maybe you don't even have roughly the idea where he is. Just you have just roughly the idea where he is. He's coming from the north because the tropes come from the north, but you cannot do anything against him. With clear shot, you can completely punish and neglect the DD's play. You launch the planes, you fly to him. These are tiny Tim rockets, which are very hard to aim. So they work great on the uh, cruisers and on battleships. But the thing that makes them so disgusting at the NCDs is you spot. And people who have played tiny Tim rockets know that they have a very long attack animation. What you do is you attack the DD, the animation kicks in, you might even hit him. But you instantly press F and you have a lot of like 3, 4, 5, sometimes even up to 6, 7, 8 seconds to shoot the DD because the planes will still spot them. And that makes the ship spotting so strong. You can find targets easily, you can devastate them then with your main guns or annoy them, make them go away from you, or you can strike targets that are behind cover. All this gives kill such such a brutal a brutal play in the game that you can just you just can do things that other battleships can't by far. You just have the one problem that the battleship usually has. It's spotting smaller targets or it's spotting targets by an island, fighting them. You completely neglect with the fact that you have planes. And this is why Kill Such is absolutely busted and broken. And remember, during attack animation, planes are invulnerable, so you can't shoot them down. They will literally spot them for a few seconds. And the DD player, or whatever it is, can't do anything about it. Here's such definitely recommended. By far one of the best ships on tier 9. Tulsa. See it? I'm gonna summarize this one very quick. It's a Des Moines with less guns and weaker armor. That's it. So... It's, it's a good ship on tier 9. You lose a third of the gun power and you have 27mm of, instead of 30mm armor. But for tier 9 it's perfectly fine. And you have a 9km instead of a 10km radar. But on the other hand you also have better concealment. Which I think is 9 point something as well. So overall a solid ship. If you like the Moines gameplay you will like the ship as well. It's very decent and recommended. I don't need to spend too long on it. It's, it's a very good ship. <clears throat> now... Carnot. Where put I Carnot? That's one of the ships I can't really tell you too much. I didn't play it enough for it. It, It's very... What I don't like about Carnot, and that's what from the times I play it, the guns seems not too consistent, and it's very big. It's very thick. 
it tends to arm shells a lot and you can get punished quite easily. It's a very huge target. But I didn't play it enough to say if it's good or bad really. I just know you can punish it quite well. And while it's fast, the guns can work. I don't know. I'll, I'll skip Kano. If you want to know more about Kano, you need to ask somebody else. It's something I need, never, never really played that much. So I don't know. I don't know what to sell about this one. Marco Polo. Now, when Marco Polo came out, it was absolute garbage. Now, it's still not great, but it's an okay ship. Um, it got the Sigma buffed. I think the dispersion as well, I can't remember. But the guns are a bit more consistent. Basically, Marco Polo is an Italian tech tree. Like the Italian tech tree, whatever it's called on tier 9. I forgot the name. Veneto, I think, right? No, Veneto is tier 8. I don't know the name about it, the Italian tier 9 battleship. Now, Alepanto. It's pretty much... A bigger version of the Veneto though, because it has 406mm guns instead of 400, uh, 380 of the Veneto. But for the bigger caliber, they put it on tier 9. It is decent, it can smack ships, but it is very, it lo reloads very long, and you don't have really you still don't have that good accuracy. Most of the times you will shoot AP anyway, like you don't have HG against DDs. It's it can work. It's okay. It's decently armored if you angle, and again, it can hit if the guns want to. But overall, it's just an average boat. Nothing excels at it. It's not even. It doesn't even have anything special. I don't think it has smoke as well. Yeah, you even give up a smoke screen, uh, the Italian smoke screen. So it's really nothing special, and unless you have Call left for nothing else, then I would not take Marco Polo either. It's nothing too special. Moving on to Z44. Z44 is pretty much a full torpedo boat. It has five guns, but don't don't get don't misunderstand them as very good. They do have a decent reload the guns, but they somewhat aim terrible and they don't do a lot of damage. This thing is all about torpedoes. The torpedoes are very good. They don't do a lot of damage, but still, I think like 12, 13k. But they reload very quickly. They have decent detection values. And they're rather fast, if I'm not wrong. I can't remember what the speed. But do I recommend it? I mean, if you love torpedo boats, sure, it's going to be a fun addition to you. I, I personally think always gunboats are better than torpedo boats by far in every scenario, just because most gunboats have insane guns and still have torpedoes that are somewhat capable of, but just not the bit, bit more better edge than the torpedo boats. Again, if you love torpedo boats, great ship for you. If you want the more like cap contesting DD or a knife fighting DD or gunpower, then you're definitely wrong with this. But if you want the torpedo boat, it's decent. It's not bad. It's not terrible. It's okay. Now to the Pomeran. Pomeran, it's shit. It's absolute garbage, and I know there's gonna be a lot of people in my YouTube video and also on Twitch now. How dare you, Trendless? It's such a good ship. Now, Pomeran, just like any other secondary related ship, works great in brawls. It also works decently in ranked, because you have less opponents, but in random battles, it's absolute garbage. <clears throat> Why do I think Friedrich the Gross is better than Pomeran? It's for the main guns. Pomeran has great secondaries, I'm not denying it. and. Pomeran has also decent survivability and everything, and Hydro and so on, but it has absolutely garbage main guns. And the fact is, in this game, no matter what ship, maybe except Schlieffen, but even without uh, even Schlieffen takes account to it, no ship of the in this game has better secondaries than main guns. In a way that what I mean with the statement is. You should never rely, rely on secondaries over main guns. Main guns will be always the bread and butter of your damage in most ships. Again, German battle cruisers with Schlieff might be an exception, but that's one. Usually, main guns, 
main guns are the bread and butter. And Pommern's main guns are absolutely atrocious and shit. They are bad in accuracy, they don't overmatch a lot since they're only 380s, they have a long reload and you have really bad firing angles. Für die Große has decent accuracy nowadays because they changed it to the American formula. And even if he misses a few shots, which can still happen, of course, you do have insane reload, which you don't have on Pommern. So Pommern excels and it can be fun in co -op, in these missions, asymmetric battles, in ranked, where you have less opponents and your secondaries can be worked easier, or in brawls. But in random battles overall, it's a trash ship and I don't recommend it. I think it's garbage and these are the kind of things you should pay attention to. It can be fun, but again, if you have to rely on secondaries, it's always a bad sign for a ship. You cannot also remember, in the passive meta that we have in the game, you barely get them to work. And if you get them to work, you most likely just get farmed down pretty quickly. Flint. I'll go up to Lazo and then I'm gonna go quickly over these guys. But first, Flint. Flint used to be a steel ship reward. And back in the day, when cruisers could increase the range with AFT, Flint was an absolute nightmare on tier 7. You had pretty much an Atlanta with better torps and a smoke screen. Great ship back in the day. Still okay, but you cannot increase the range anymore. And CVs farm you like crazy nowadays instead of where you had actually really good AA back in the day. So, overall, Flint. It's decent, but nowhere near as good as it used to be. You can still have your rainbow games with it and farm people, but CVs are a way bigger threat for you. Submarines completely destroy you and you just don't have the range anymore. You lose, you have like 11 something point eight cam range and it used to be 13.3. It's just not really as strong as it used to be, but it's still decent. Duke of York. Duke of York is, is pretty much a King George that gives up on reload rate for two gimmicks. This is something you need to remember. Duke of York is exactly like a King George, but it gives up reload for improved AP ricochet angles and hydroacoustic surge. Now, you do think improved AP ricochet angles don't sound bad, and I agree on battleships it's very powerful, but the problem is those AP shells are from the natural habit already pretty garbage. That's exactly the problem. They're not these 356 mm guns are not good when it comes to AP penetration. It even says it here. They have reduced chance of ricocheting, but AP shells with low armor penetration capabilities. So they even admit the guns are bad. And then you get the hydro, a 4km hydro, but you give up, and you need to remember that you give up, I think, four or five seconds of reload. King George has 25 or 26 second reload while Duke of York has 30. And giving up such a massive amount of DPM for two gimmicks, which are not really that good, is not worth it. So I don't think Duke of York is a good ship. I wouldn't take it. I think George is just way better, honestly. Lazo. Actually, we're gonna go Lazo and Bliska. Bliska is also one thing. Lazo is a very interesting ship. It's pretty much like a mixture between Shors and Shapayev. And it's a long range spamming HD ship. It can be a lot of fun. But it is purely a ranged build ship. You gotta remember that if you do it. Uh, what makes it so special is it has a very special, a very special spotter plane. Which means you have a decent amount of base range. And then you have spotter planes with very short cooldowns. So you start your spotter plane, you have it a minute or something, you shoot targets, you lose it again, and then you have a very 15, 20, whatever seconds cooldown, and then you can use it again. It has really good and well aimed guns on long range and can be a good supportive fire cruiser, but it has trash armor and you don't really want to push with it. If you like this long range HG combat with a lasso, it's definitely a cool ship. It's also pretty strong with the range because you gotta remember this is a tier 7 and not a tier 10 or something. So you can outrange quite some opponents and especially if you top tier, you can farm BBs down very well. It's a decent ship. Just don't try to get hit and play it very much on range because you will regret if you go into a brawl quite heavily. 
Still a decent boat and recommended by me. And now, last but not least, Pliska Vizka. <laughs> Pliska Vizka is a destroyer that's actually still in my heart as a pretty decent ship. Nowhere near as good as it used to be, but still fun to play. It has decent amount of it has a decent reload and it has a lot of guns. I think Bliska has seven guns, which means it has a heavy alpha strike when it comes to DD combat. The only downside this ship had was it has very high detectability as it says here. So you got outspotted quite often. But it is still pretty good at farming down ships. Um the torpedoes, I don't know, does it have torpedoes? I can't remember how good the torpedoes were. Uh, I would need to check Bliska real quick. Torpedoes. I think they were also pretty usable, honestly. Eight cam. Eight cam tops. <laughs> yeah, pretty decent then. Again, Bliska. It's a pretty decent ship. You can use the torps. You can use the guns. Again. Biggest problem is the concealment of it, and that's all wallet. I, I loved playing it back in the day. I still think it's a very decent boat and capable, but not for everybody, especially for newer players. Probably it's not the best because the high concealment is not that easy to compensate for in a lot of situations. So I think it's a fun boat. I would recommend it, but it will, will also not be for everybody. But that's that's fine. No, no ship is for everybody pretty much. And yes, this is overall the guide on those ships. I do exclude the tier 3 and 5s because they're all decent ships here. In a way, they're not bad. None of these ships is actually bad. But you don't really want to you don't really want to spend your coal on those ships unless you have everything else. Simply for the fact because the reason why you got to get a cold ship is not that you only get a specific ship you want, but you also want to get a very good ship. And especially with the tier 9s, you want to get a credit maker. So your first goal when getting a cold ship should be at least to be a tier 7 or higher. That's the goal. Optimally, if you want to go for money grind, it should be a tier 9, although tier 10s with the Perma uh, certificate they get, they're also really good at grinding or the T8s. But if it goes for money, you want to go fully on these higher tiers first. Before you want to later on, if you have enough coal, go for the smaller ones. Really, really good selection of ships overall. And the last thing I can say about it is besides one or two exceptions that I mentioned, such as Pomeran, for example, or. Marco Polo and so on or Duke of York these are all really solid or great ships so you're not going wrong with most of them and they're just like steel ships mostly very good ships don't don't tier 9 ships struggle with MM and tier 11 ships <laughs> no that's true tier 9 can face nowadays super ships but honestly the super ship population is not that big and it doesn't really matter if you get griefed, for example, by a Malta or an Eagle. The pain will be the same, the receiving end. And yeah, it's true, though, that tier 9 goes against super ships nowadays. But it's not that often. You mostly end up against tier 10s only. And that's something that could have happened always. So that's pretty much it. But yeah, thank you for watching for this call guide. Uh, about the pros and cons of most of these ships. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, guys. It would really mean a lot to me. And check out Twitch, Discord. As per usual, you find the links everywhere, either on my YouTube channel or on Twitch. And thank you for watching this guide, my friends. Bye bye, my friends.